Goodfellas, Hesh Rabkin is one of the most colorful characters on The Sopranos. His story, from his early days as a music label founder to his later position as a counselor to Tony Soprano, is a story of power, money, and loyalty. In this episode, we take an in-depth look at Hesh's story, his life, business, and relationships with the core characters of The Sopranos. Hesh is not a wise guy in the ranks of the Mafia. Despite this, Tony regularly turns to him for advice on a variety of topics. Hesh is a master of keeping a low profile. He prefers to spend his time playing cards, eating with Tony's crew, or at the Bada Bing nightclub. Despite his discreet nature, Hesh is vital to The Sopranos. Hesh's Jewish background adds an intriguing layer to his character. In a world dominated by Italian Americans, Hesh is an unusual outsider who has managed to carve out a niche for himself. Through this dynamic, interesting relationships between Hesh and the other characters emerge. And it's always interesting to watch him navigate the complex web of relationships within the Italian American set. A savvy businessman, he made his fortune in the record industry, founding F Note Records in the 50s. Hesh had a sharp eye for talent, and thanks to him, many black musicians gained fame. However, he didn't stop at making money from selling records. Hesh managed to get himself listed as a co-writer of songs, so he was owed a portion of the royalties. In fact, this is quite a popular practice even now. A prime example is the Backstreet Boys. For many years, there were endless disputes between the musicians and their producer. One of the main stumbling blocks was related to finances. Perlman was brazenly taking a large chunk of the band's income and not paying them what they were due under the contract. The most incredible part of the story is that Lou Perlman had gotten himself into a position where he was legally considered the sixth member of the band on paper. This entitled him to receive a percentage of all band-related sales for the rest of his life. But fortunately, the band was able to get rid of this sixth member during the trial. The judge who heard the case found himself on the side of the Backstreet Boys. He stated that his daughter is a big fan of the band and has a poster of them hanging on her wall. But to his surprise, the judge did not see Lou Pearlman's face on the poster. In the end, the judge rejected the producer's complaints, and the band was left without a sixth member. But let's return to the main character of our story. Despite his greed, Hesh possesses a cool head and good-naturedness. Among Tony's closest associates, he is also unusual in that he has a good education. In addition to business, Hesh is fond of breeding horses and loves dark-skinned women. His son-in-law, Eli, has also gotten involved in Hesh's loan shark business, which creates some fun family dynamics. Hesh first made his mark in the pilot episode, acting in conjunction with Tony as part of a scam to scam insurance companies through their debtor, Alex Mahaffey. Hesh and Pussy went to great lengths to try to intimidate Mahaffey. They even dragged him to a waterfall. However, it was done in a calm manner. Mahaffey realized that refusal to cooperate would result in death. In the future, Hesh advises Tony not to get involved with the family of Hasidic Jews during the dispute over who will get their hotel. Hesh's predictions tangentially come true, but Hesh manages to help Tony end the tense negotiations by cluing the Sopranos into the Hasidic Jews' weak spot. One of the traits that makes Hesh such a strong character is his extraordinary standpoint. As a Jew in the world of the Italian-American mafia, he can offer ideas that no one else can. Whether it's a business conversation or just chatting with Tony's men, Hesh always has something to say. In the episode, a hit is a hit. Hesh plays a key role in trying to help Tony's nephew Christopher make sure that his girlfriend Adriana is barely qualified to work in the music business. However, this is just the beginning of the drama. Once Chris gets in touch with Hesh on behalf of a rapper, Massive Genius, claiming that Hesh owes a portion of royalties to the black musician's widow, things really start to heat up. In response to Hesh's refusal to pay, the rapper threatened to sue, but Hesh had the good sense to threaten a countersuit, accusing the rapper of copyright violation. Let's dive briefly into Hesh's past to understand the origins of his conflict with the massive genius. Back in the day, the music industry was a lawless place ruled by crooked concert hall owners, agents and radio stations, as well as record distributors and stores. But at the center of it all was the mafia. Hesh Rabkin was an entrepreneur who knew how to make money, and he did so by contracting young and promising musicians. However, his contracts were extremely unfair, as they gave him the right to all of the artist's written songs. His label was a place where many musicians dreamed of a career, and Hesh knew how to use this envious atmosphere to his advantage. In the lawless world of the music industry of the 50s and 60s, 
you had to have connections to survive. For Hesh, that meant getting in touch with Johnny Boy and paying him a tax to settle territorial issues. Hesh and Johnny Boy teamed up in their quest to exploit the lawlessness and corruption in the music industry to make big money. And they succeeded by having the right amount of muscle. Hesh knew how to make money in music, and Johnny Boy knew how to stand up for his people. Together, they created more than just a friendship. They created a business empire that kept paying and paying. These two saw opportunities where others saw only troubles. Unlike many other partners in the mafia world, Hesh and Johnny were equals. Hesh always paid Johnny's dues, and Johnny never felt the need to step in and risk killing the golden egg-laying goose. Both Hesh and Johnny made a lot of money, but not everyone was happy about their success. Many envied them and felt that the money they earned should be theirs. However, the old-school mafia followed its own rules, among which was a taboo on embezzling the profits of other mafiosi. When Johnny passed away, the team, including Hesh, went to Tony. Soprano was a young and immature leader, and everyone speculated whether he would be able to stand up to the challenge. However, Tony had innate leadership skills that allowed him to keep Johnny's crew loyal. By the time the series began, the music industry had undergone major changes, and Hesh was working less and less at his record label and more and more on the street under Tony's umbrella of protection. Hesh wasn't Tony's most profitable stock, but everyone knew he belonged with the Sopranos. Whoever tried to make a move on him risked getting himself in trouble. When the rapper showed up, Tony was forced to deal with it. In this world, respect is of the utmost significance, and even a small amount of money can spark a fight. In the episode Christopher, Hesh helped Silvio in his argument about Christopher Columbus Day by connecting him through his friend to a Native American casino landlord. In The Sopranos, Hesh is a character who is always in the midst of events. For example, in the episode In Camelot, Tony makes a shocking discovery. His father, Hesh, and Phil Leotardo were co-owners of the racetrack. And after Johnny Boy died, he willed his share to his mistress, Fran Feldstein. Tony arranged a meeting with Phil and Hesh to demand a share. And although they reluctantly agreed, tensions were high. But these were all blossoms compared to the drama that played out in the members-only episode. Hesh and his son-in-law were attacked by members of the Leotardo crew, who thought the son-in-law was doing business on their turf without permits. The mobsters set fire to the son-in-law's gas tank to smoke the duo out of the car and then proceeded to beat up Eli. The son-in-law, trying to escape, manages to test the bumper and Hesh gets a savory punch in the face. However, Hesh wasn't the kind of man to give up without a fight. He demanded that Phil make amends and got compensation with Tony's support. Even with all that had happened, Hesh still took the time to visit Tony in the hospital as he recovered from his injury. The final season of The Sopranos was full of drama, and Hesh was right in the middle of it. Tony needed money to cover a string of gambling losses, and Hesh gave him a bridge loan of $200,000. However, when Tony didn't pay back the loan on time, things went south. That's when Tony started berating Hesh about the interest on the loan. Obviously, the argument escalated their once warm relationship. However, when Hesh's girlfriend Renata died while sleeping, Tony repaid the debt out of respect. Admittedly, his condolences were brief and apathetic, suggesting that their relationship had been irreparably damaged. I believe Renata's death saved Hesh's life. Tony could have made Hesh just vanish, thus getting rid of the debt. At the end of the series, Hesh's fate remains unclear. Perhaps he continues to profit from the aubergines. Who knows? If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to Vano VHS and hit the like button.